Welcome dancers, welcome dance teachers. Now I will talk to you about the importance of correct stance. I will look at it from an anatomical point of view, from an artistic point of view, and to give you tips on what to do and what not to do, how to feel it, and how to correct yourself during an exercise or when you're preparing yourself for the beginning of an exercise. I will start with the uh, basic stance for classical ballet. Obviously, one's feet are well planted in the floor. Secondly, the legs should be extended. Thirdly, there should be a nice length, a lightness in the hips. Uh, fourthly, a very up, light feeling in the stomach and a length, elongation actually is the right word, from the top of the head to the tailbone. Then the neck should be as free as possible, a lot of space in between the shoulder and the ears. And then the shoulders should be nicely placed. So now I will take it from a more of an anatomical point of view. If one was to put their hand here and start to rotate the shoulder and to actually visualize the fact that the whole skeleton, the arm and the shoulder blade is only attached here, one can then easily envision that one is just putting a cape back. So you drop the cape back. So you can just lift your shoulders and drop it back so it sits nicely in the correct position. Then with the vertebrae, the spine shouldn't be completely, completely flat, but as extended as possible, i.e. not too far back with the upper part of the torso or too far forward, or what tends to happen when one turns out is what you call lordius when the popo is sticking out and then one receives a big arch in the back. So obviously to achieve that one would use the abdominal muscles, lightly lifting, a length in the spine. I will demonstrate in a minute with the dancer exactly. Okay dancer if you could please put yourself in parallel position. Dancers and dance teachers I will now demonstrate with a dancer. So here, as I would mentioned before, it's very important that this is nice and long and that the shoulders are sitting nice and back and that there is an elongation in the spine from, from, from the lumbus right up to the neck. Uh, if you could please now put yourself in first position. Again, I'm repeating myself, but I think it's very important to be very aware of the gluteal muscles, which are the, the medium ones and the minimum ones. Once again, they actually hold the position and the five on each side, the AD ductors. Uh, if you could please now just put one leg on a releve and then start to rotate in and out. The actual motion of turnout, the actual muscles that rotate the leg are actually five deep internal muscles. So just not to get a little bit confused that your gluteal muscles make the turnout and the AD ductors, they're actually inside. If you could just do that again for me, turning in, turning out. That's it. They're deep, deep rooted muscles. If you put yourself now in first, once you have that rotation, once again it's the gluteal muscles that hold you and the AD ductors. And what happens then, dancers, if you do work the gluteal in the AD ductus, you have a little bit more, let's say, freedom or flow in the knee and in the ankles. Because if you're not holding correctly the gluteal or the AD ductus, most of the force will then go in the knee and in the ankle and you'll receive this kind of rolling. So be very aware that your foot is nicely planted, it's a kind of a three-point thing with your metatarsal nice and up, a nice even distribution on the front of the foot and the heel nicely planted. If you could please now for me dancer, put yourself parallel towards the bar. 
Okay. Um, if you could please just uh, make a lordious position. Sometimes, when we try to get a turn out, it's very easy to start to tilt in the hips, or you could also be anatomically this way built, which is not a problem, it's just to be aware. If you do tilt, if you do have an arch, what happens is that you, you in one point, you receive a lot of pressure when you're jumping, when you're standing on one leg or two legs, and again, over a period of time, that could create some kind of friction. So it's very important that you do have a straight back. It cannot be completely straight because anatomically it's, it's, it's not impossible, but it, it doesn't have to be like flat like a board from the top to the bottom. I just have a little tip for you if you want to, if you're not sure if that you are, have this lordius, this curve. It's very simple, it's a cooking spoon, you can put the cooking spoon in, in your leotard and with that you can, you can readjust yourself. Make sure, you know, if, there's, if you can put two fingers through then obviously that's not correct. So that's a little tip also for the teachers with the young children. If you want to help them, it's quite fun to put a cooking spoon or a drumstick or something just, just to give them a kind of a guideline actually how that should be done. So again, it's a very simple thing. It's a cooking spoon or a drumstick. Okay, if you could please face to point number one again for me. So again, dancers, engaging the gluteals, engaging the adductors, so that this is taking the support, so that there is then some freedom in the knee and the ankles, and the shoulders are nicely in back, and this is free. Do not block yourself. Do not stand like a piece of wood. You, you have to have the yeah, feeling or essence that you're a little bit, um, how would I say, sensitive, that you can be adjusted, that you can be moved, that you can recorrect yourself. And as a professional dancer, you will always, through your whole career, constantly having to recorrect yourself, readjust, find out what's needed, find out which muscles are working, which muscles are engaged, which ones are passive. We'll take that one step further now. We'll take that on uh, one leg, correct stance on one leg. Okay, thank you.